Charlie Kirk has decided to make women mad everywhere, but the question is, is he wrong? Welcome to my channel, Outspoken Samantha. If you are new here, welcome. I would love it if you would help me to grow this channel and hit that subscribe button now. And if you're returning, welcome back. I truly do appreciate your continued support on my channel, and I hope that you are subscribed as well. So I'm sure most, if not all of you, are at least somewhat familiar with who Charlie Kirk is. He is a very popular political commentator, primarily for the right. He does a lot of traveling around to college campuses to challenge the ideas and the things that college students are currently learning today under the guise of getting an education and he encourages them to do the thing that their college institution should be encouraging them to do but is not which is to think for themselves and he has a very wide audience of people from all ages and all backgrounds so i know that that means that a lot of people support a lot of the things that he says his positions on things his explanations of things he has a great understanding of world history and u.s history so i really appreciate his input on a lot of different issues and feel that as many people do that he has a lot of valuable things to add to these important conversations that being said it seems the as though some of the opinions he has shared recently on women's issues have ruffled some feathers even on the right and I think the reaction has been really interesting but the question of course is is he wrong in what he is saying and are we able to put our emotions aside and really listen to what he is trying to tell us and the point he is trying to make so ladies I understand that in the history of telling women to calm down that no woman has ever calmed down as a result but I do think that we need to take a deep breath take a step back and act actually listen to what the point that he is trying to make. So I'm going to play the clip. It's only about 30 seconds long. At least this first one is because there is another one that I do want to touch on, but I would love to hear your comments below. What do you think that he is trying to say? Do you think he is being misogynistic? Do you think he is out of line? And then of course I will offer my opinion on the other side of it. We basically told a great generation of young women, don't get married, don't have kids, go get a corporate job. And it's created mass political hysteria um, and then in their early 30s, they get really upset because they say, you know, the boys don't want to date me anymore because they're not at their prime. And people get mad when I say that. Well, it's just true. If you're in your early 30s, I'm sorry. It's like you're not as attractive in the dating pool as you were in the early 20s. But again, you have your corporate job and cats. So I thought, you, you know. So the caption at the top of the video says, Charlie Kirk says women in their early 30s are not at their prime and not as attractive in the dating pool. But the first thing that he touches on is he just says that we have this incredible or this amazing generation of women or however he words it that have been told to not get married to not have kids but to pursue corporate america and to pursue all of these things that tend to be more manly pursuits and this has created political hysteria and i think some women are taking this to mean that he's saying that we haven't offered anything of value to the workplace or that we've destabilized the workplace or we've destabilized the economy or politics politics. And I don't think that that's what he's saying. And I don't think that that's what he means. I think what he's saying is as we have told women to move further away from the things that actually bring us joy and fulfillment, we have seen women become increasingly unhappy, increasingly depressed, increasingly lost and trying to find our purpose. And I think that ha this has caused some hysteria because instead of trying to course correct and realize that the path that we are heading to down is not bringing us joy and fulfillment and say, hey, maybe we need to at least establish more of a balance we just continue down the path that is making us more miserable and then we just blame men and get more angry at the opposite sex and this is just adding to the whole heap of issues that the country is already divided on secondly and this is the comment that really got people riled up when he says that women in their early 30s are not at their prime and not as attractive in the dating pool i think that this speaks to the fact that even as conservative women i don't think that we realize a lot of times how much the feminist ideas have really been infiltrated into our own belief system systems. Because a lot of times even we seem to forget that men and women think about things differently and they approach things differently and that includes dating. We think that because as women we look for men that are driven, we look for men that set goals and that want to work and that want to climb the corporate ladder and that want to do all of these things outside of their home. We assume that because those are the things that we look for in men that those are the things that men look for in women. And we have internalized this idea that our value comes from pursuing a corporate career or pursuing you know the highest level of education that we can possibly achieve. And then when he says we're not as attractive 
active in the dating pool, we take that to mean that it, he's devaluing all of these things that we have worked so hard to accomplish. But what we failed to realize is that two men those things are not as important. Men don't care what our paychecks look like. Men don't care how many degrees that we have. Men don't care how many promotions that we've had. Those are not the things that matter to them. Men are biologically driven to procreate. And that means they are looking for women who are in those prime childbearing years who they can settle down with early and work toward building that home together with. And as you get older, no ma matter how physically attractive you are, the reality is that those childbearing years and that ability to settle down and build that home, those years become narrow and that opportunity becomes smaller. There has been a massive increase in channels on YouTube, this growth in men creating these channels, talking to each other about all of these women who create videos on TikTok, talking about how much of a boss babe there are, they are, how independent they are, and all of these men saying, we don't care. We just, we want women back. We want femininity back. And their audiences are growing very quickly because men can relate to each other more and more about having to deal with women who are becoming more like men. And then we have all of these women in the comments saying that Charlie Kirk is calling them unattractive or saying that they're invaluable or just getting overall offended by what he is saying. And to me, this is not meant to be a personal attack. And if you take it personally, you're not able to have a productive conversation that actually addresses the issue. Because of course women are beautiful in their 30s and 40s and 50s. Of course women have a lot to offer at that point. But when it comes to what men actually look for when they are searching for that long-term partner, when they are doing what they are biologically made to do, they are looking for somebody who has the highest probability of providing those things for them. The next clip that went around on X that really got people mad was Charlie Kirk talking about birth control. Um, so let's just listen to the clip and you can tell me what your, your thoughts are and then we'll respond to it on the other side. Birth control like really screws up female brains, by the way. Every single one of you need to make sure that your loved ones are not on birth control. It increases depression, anxiety, suicidal ideation. Uh, birth control is the number one most prescribed medication for young ladies under the age of 25. They, they, they will give birth, young ladies birth control for pimples, for acne, for to control their moods, their period. It is, it is awful. It's terrible. Um, and it creates it's very angry and bitter young ladies and young women. So that was just him talking, obviously, about the effects of birth control, which we'll get into in just a minute. And then he goes on to say no one should ever put their daughter on birth control. Now he's saying, get your kids off birth control. And, and, and praise God, they yeah. shouldn't be on birth control if they're your kids. No Christian parent should ever allow their daughter on birth control, ever, period. There, that, that, that is, and you, if your daughter's on birth control or granddaughter, get them off immediately. So obviously, I think it goes without saying that this is probably going to make a lot of women mad, um, I, you know, assuming that they are men stepping in and trying to control women's bodies. However, the topic of birth control has flooded through social media over the last couple of weeks. And there have been this surge in women coming forward, talking about all of the side effects that they have dealt with, that they have been dealing with that are physical and mental. And, you know, thinking that they were alone in this struggle, thinking that they were the, the rare case and that, you know, the side effects that are listed in these birth control pamphlets, that they are just one of the few experiencing these things, only to learn that the side effects that they have been told are rare are actually far more more common than any of them ever realized. And what's really weird is that the more women have come out and talked about this and acknowledged that this is happening more often than they realized, the more that their voices have been silenced. Publications like the Washington Post have actually tried to debunk and discredit these women that are talking about their experiences. This is an article, I believe it's from The Federalist. It says, a growing number of American women are sharing their stories about their experiences with birth control, noting all manner of negative side effects. Yet the Washington Post claims those experiences don't align with the data, which its reporters claim with straight faces, demonstrate that the likelihood of developing blood clots, gaining weight, becoming depressed, suffering, other mental health issues or increasing the likelihood of infertility are all low. 
Yet not satisfied just to cite a $21.5 billion industry that has every incentive to encourage pro-contraceptive research and discourage findings that undermine the narrative that contraception is a critical component to female empowerment, corporate media are taking it upon themselves to silence the dissenters. TikTok recently removed at least five videos linking birth control to mental health issues and other health problems after the post asked how the company prevents the spread of misinformation, reports Washington post in self-congratulation. And it's interesting how the, the narrative on this can get very twisted if you have all of these platforms that are taking down the videos of women talking about the effects and actually trying to empower women and give them information and encourage them to educate themselves on the possibility of experiencing these risks. If you take down the videos of women speaking about it and then you circulate this video of somebody like Charlie Kirk spreading information about, hey, maybe don't put your daughters on birth control because all of these women are talking about the side effects yet you can't find the videos of the women talking about the side effects, then it sounds like you have a conservative Christian white male trying to control women's bodies when actually it's women that are trying to talk to women and they can't. And while I understand that maybe part of Charlie's opinion on this issue might come from a religious perspective, because I know that there are Christians who believe that women should not be on birth control just as a matter of their, their moral worldview, I am a Christian and I do not hold that belief at all, and I do not want women to ever be denied access to the things that they feel are best for their bodies, but making an informed decision and actually having true autonomy over your body is also the ability to be able to access the potential risks and the harm and to be able to access information that allows you to make a completely informed decision. And when you withhold information, that is manipulation. In light of all of that, I did see this video that Savannah Hernandez posted yesterday in response to some of the things that Charlie Kirk has said, but not necessarily what he has said, but just the delivery of the message. This is a PSA for all men on the right wing. We really need to work on our delivery of our messaging to women. There is a reason why women are leaning more towards liberalism and men are leaning more towards conservatism. And there is a reason why men are drawn more to that Andrew Tate-esque style of commentary and women are averse to it. Because guess what? Men and women are different. Now, I completely agree with all of these sentiments of women should be mothers as soon as possible. They should stay at home with the family as opposed to being in corporate life. I agree with the sentiment that birth control is bad for us. It's bad for our brains and and it changes our physical and mental structure, essentially. I do agree with the sentiment that we need strong men in society and that feminism is a lie that a lot of women have fallen for. I agree with all of that, but to every single right winger who is talking about these issues, I notice this pattern where they try to talk to women like they talk to men. And that's why we're losing a lot of women in the right wing, because guess what? Women aren't men and you can't talk to women the same way you talk to men. When it comes to men, you can do the Andrew Tate style, like be very bold, be very assertive, be very upfront, because that's what men understand and that's how you do have to talk to men. You just have to be super upfront with them. With women, because we are more emotional creatures, you do have to have a softer and much better approach at talking about these issues. So when we have this wide variety of right wing men telling women, uh, yeah, once you turn 30, you, you're not in your prime anymore and uh, you're not as attractive, that messaging to try to push people to get, specifically women, to get married earlier isn't going to hit as well. So, uh, you know, again, I haven't even wanted to touch this issue because I guarantee you down in the comments below, you're going to see people saying, oh, Seb, you're such a rabid feminist now. No, I do agree with the majority, actually pretty much all of the sentiments that right-wing men have for women but our delivery of this messaging is completely off and there is a huge reason why we're losing women. Really love the work that Savannah Hernandez does. I agree with a lot of things she says. She does some incredible things. Highly recommend following her. Not that anybody needs me to recommend that because she's all, already wildly popular. And while I absolutely agree with her that men and women are different, we receive things differently, clearly um, as demonstrated by the response to things that Charlie Kirk has said, though factual, the delivery is just what throws is throwing people off. 
What I find problematic about what Savannah is saying here, and it's not that it's even untrue, is the fact that what this tells me is that women cannot handle facts, that women need to be coddled, that women need to be babied, that we can't handle somebody being blunt with us. And to me, that is really ironic considering we're in this era where we are supposed to be more empowered. We're supposed to be stronger and more independent and more capable. Yet for some reason, the side of the political aisle that does not respect that empowerment, that doesn't respect that independence, that doesn't respect that strength is the side of the aisle that wins women over because they're manipulative and because they appeal to our emotion. So while again, I understand what Savannah is saying here, what I would love to see is for us to encourage women to not approach these issues with emotion, to actually get a hold of ourselves and actually just look at what people are saying and take it as a statement of fact and understand, as we say repeatedly on a daily basis, that truth is what's compassionate, that facts are what compa what's compassionate. And when we can make decisions based on the things that are real, that is how we truly help society. That is how we truly help men and women. That is how we truly help children. That is how we truly better the world around us. I'm encouraging women to not get caught up in our feelings and emotions and not get so distracted by fluffy words and phrases that we're unable to see the issues for what they really are. And yes, I agree that there is some criticism to be had for the delivery from conservative men and probably just from politicians in general. It's really hard to have that criticism when the delivery from the other side of the aisle involves men in dresses and women in beards. In my opinion, this is not a delivery crisis, but this is a truth crisis. But I would love to hear all of your thoughts on this in the comments below. I enjoy hearing what you guys think about things. Even if you completely disagree with me, that is totally fine. But please sure that you hit that like button because it helps far more than you know. Please make sure that you are subscribed. I am trying really hard to grow this channel and would love to reach even more people to have these informed conversations with. Keep it real, guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.